Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is game user settings? The post processing quality. Let's go ahead and look at our note itself. If I can find where I hit it, there it is, and we'll see how it works. And like our other quality notes, it's pretty simple. It comes off of our game user settings. We typed in post. We're going to find a getter and a setter for post processing quality. You can see them both here. And they're either going to take an integer or give back an integer with a value between 0 and 3. 0 being the lowest and 3 being the highest. Now, the post processing quality is not changing the post processing version. Um, let me pull this up. Sorry. Let's say this correctly. It's not changing the AA for post-processing. It's changing a bunch of settings which it's calling the post-process quality. We can see that here. Inside of your config folder in your engine you'll find a base scalability INI file. It has a bunch of base settings for your scalability. One of those is this grouping for post-process quality. Remember how I mentioned there's 0 through 3 for the value you can set on the node? Well you have four different presets from 0 to 3. Now it changes about 10 different settings when you change the quality. Let me show you how it works and then we'll discuss it a little further. So when I hit play right now we actually have a bunch of stuff on our screen and if I was to change the post processing quality we're gonna see some things change. Now it may be a little difficult to see because of the menu but the nice thing is the post processing quality setting along with the other quality settings for our scalability correspond to the engine scalability settings and these options here. So you can see right now I have post processing on low. If I was changed to epic, well things are going to happen. Let me change everything to epic and we'll start from there. I have a post processing volume in my scene and as you can see I have a depth of field turned on where basically everything outside of my focal point is blurring. I also have a giant lens flare right here, JJ Abrams style. Now when I adjust, let's make sure our flare is over here, here we go, and you can see we have depth of field out of range. When I adjust the scalability for post-processing, it's going to adjust things such as, well, no real difference here because we're not affecting what we have set up. Medium is pretty much going to kill our lens flare as you can see. It also adjusts our light bloom. And then low actually changes our depth of field where we no longer have depth of field on. What it's doing is it's going through, and if I go back to my right file, there we go. What it's doing is going through and it's changing these settings, this entire group, based on these presets. So at the max, you can see we can have, we're allowed to have a motion blur quality of four, and we can have three ambient occlusion levels. Our depth of field quality is set to two, so it's probably high. Bloom quality set to 5, eye adaption set to 2. We have a bunch of different settings that correspond to post-processing. And as we lower our quality, we're lowering the quality of these settings. All the way down to, for example, at 0, you can now see we have... Where is the depth of field? Here we go. Depth of field quality is now 0, which means depth of field is turned off. Motion blur is going to be turned off. Ambient occlusion is going to be turned off. Lens flare, boom, 0. You also notice that quality of 1, lens flare 0. That's why when we changed it to our bottom 2, we had no lens flare. But lens flare here is quality 2 on these two post-processing settings. Now because these are the default files, default files, default settings in the base scalability, you can just go in and change them yourself. Maybe you want lens flares to be disabled only at the lowest. We'll go ahead and just set lens flare quality to 1 or 2. For these ones and set it to zero here. Maybe you want motion blur to always be off. Well set it to zero for all of your settings and now no matter what the player chooses they'll have no motion blur. So this allows you to change in a group all of the post process settings very easily and it should be adjusted based on how you want your game to work. So that is pretty much the node post processing quality. We have a setter and a getter it's going to be a 0 through 3 integer. 0 is lowest, 3 is highest. 
And remember, when we change the quality or we get the quality, it's going to actually adjust a group of settings and not just one setting.